Okay, now let's look at our first counter, which is called two bit up counter. I'm just taking a simple example. Then we'll increase the complexity. We'll also look at the down counter as well. Uh, we will give the time first to this first counter so that everything will be clear. Then we will go on fast. Okay. So here two bit up counter. This is the circuit I've made. You can see, and I've used a T flip flop. Why T? You can use J K or a T flip flop for their toggle property. Okay, uh, because uh, they have in their characteristic table toggle property. That's why in asynchronous counters you use J K or a T flip flop. Okay, because it adds to the sequences, counting sequences. That's why you go for toggle property. Here you can see I have taken this T flip flop, another T flip flop. I have given an external clock to this first guy, and the output of the first flip flop is given as the clock to the second flip flop. With just nothing, nothing else I have done, no extra circuitry. So this is the external clock, and this clock is given as uh, from the output of flip flop one. Now remember always the extra uh, the flip flop which is having external clock. Will be will be having LSB. Okay, that bit will be LSB. The output of this flip flop will be LSB. Okay, whole sequence will be there. No, so that's why uh, you will have a lot of bits. So there will be MSB and LSB. So LSB will always be con uh, the 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 connected to the external clock. Okay, this is very important, very very important. So I I you will able to. Identify from uh, which is the MSB side and LSB side by looking at the circuit. Wherever the external clock is, that side will be LSB, and you go on and on. So MSB you will reach. Generally, what happens? We see MSB here and LSB here, right? We are used to uh, looking at that kind of bits. But here, what happens? Whatever external clock is there, close to the LSB will be there. Okay, the output is taken and feeded into the input. Not necessarily it has to be negative edge triggered. Um, we are just not to you not used to uh, watching negative edged clock. That's why I have taken an example. I'll show you a pro positive one as well. But you will certainly see edge triggered only. Uh, positive or negative, it can be both. So here you can see uh, the output is given here, and this is one output LSB, and this is another output MSB. Two flip flops are there, so two bit. Two bit counter, okay. How it is up counter? We will see here. You can see the uh, inputs to both the flip so flops are fixed, fixed, fixed to one. Remember T flip flop. What happens if the input is zero? The present state is equal to next state. If the in uh, input is one, the present state, uh, the next state will be the complement of present state. Okay. Again, I will tell you. In T flip flop, what happens if the input is zero? Whatever the next state will be equal to present state, and when the input is one, the next state will be complement of present state that you have already seen in T flip flops. So that property, toggle property, we are using. So by default, you are fixing the input of both the flip flops to one, so that they will be toggling every clock pulse. Okay. Now, what is happening? This guy is getting clock, so every negative edge trigger, this will change its state, and whenever the change uh, state of this will change, depending upon that, this flip flop will work. Okay, so this this you have understood. This also you have understood. Now you can imagine this big box, big giant box, as this box which I showed you in the first video of counter. Your only input is clock, which is this one. Your inputs, these are fixed to one, which is inside this, and your outputs are this and this. So Q zero, you can imagine LSB, and Q one, you can imagine MSB. Okay, that is how you can see this uh, circuit. So mostly you will be having this box. Input will be clock, and you will have some outputs. Now, how this will work? Let's see. When this negative edge clock will come, negative edge means like. So you will be having clock like this, right? Clock will be like this. So this negative edge, whenever this negative edge will come, this will function, and depending upon whatever the value of the input is, the state of this output will change. Okay. 
so imagine in the beginning what you are having is zero zero state okay zero clock pulse nothing came and your initial state is zero zero for both this is your q1 already written here okay this is your q1 this is q0 so when first clock pulse will come this guy will look for a negative edge trigger negative edge of the clock whenever the negative edge will come this was zero input is one so output will be now uh, toggle of that toggle of previous state so zero was there say q0 zero was there it becomes one okay toggles toggles now this guy will not work because this needs negative edge okay since your output q0 goes from 0 to 1 it will not respond it will only respond when the clock will come from 1 to 0 right negative edge so what will happen this this will not change its state that's why here 0 is there then second clock pulse will come at the negative edge of second clock pulse q0 will again toggle it will become 0 now q0 is changing from 1 to 0 negative edge will come here and that's why this guy will also change its state it becomes 1 okay toggles toggles 0 to 1 right again i am telling you initial state was 0 0 0 clock pulse first clock pulse came at the negative edge of first clock pulse q0 changes its states because the input is 1 so toggles the previous value toggles the previous value this guy doesn't changes it because q0 is feeded as negative uh, edge clock to the t1 flip flop so it is changing state from 0 to 1 imagine you, this is the edge triggered okay so it will only work when there will be a transition it will not respond to uh, if uh, whether it is in zero state or one state okay so one to zero it became then only this guy re reflected its output and became one then the third clock pulse will come this guy will change its state from zero to one at the negative edge of clock since it is changing from zero to one this is this will not change its state so it became one only and then fourth clock pulse will come this will change again its state because of the negative edge of the clock and now it is changing from 1 to 0 this line is changing from 1 to 0 this will also be changed from 1 to 0 okay so what you are getting in decimal you can see 0 0 is 0 0 1 is 1 1 0 is 2 1 1 is 3 then in fourth clock pulse you are again getting 0 0 so your sequence is like 0 1 2 3 0 0 1 2 3 0 and it will go on and on if fifth clock pulse will come it will show one six clock pulse two seven clock pulse three likewise it goes on and on and on and on okay never ending type of um, counter so just as far as the clock is keep coming to the input uh, the output will be like zero one two three zero one two three zero one two three so you can see it is a two bit up counter okay right uh, two bit uh, and you can see the maximum count is two to the power n minus one uh, this value is two so 2 to the power 2 is 4 4 minus 1 is 3 that's what you are getting maximum count okay so we will see other properties as well i hope you are getting the feel i will give you the timing diagram so that you will uh, you will adjust to the in this new kind of circuit watch this video again and again if you feel like how it is working now i'll give you the timing diagram and you will clearly see at what time the transitioning is taken place okay okay let's look at the quickly uh, look at the timing diagram uh, this will give you much more better comfortable feel about this circuit <coughs> so you can see this is the state we uh, the uh, the diagram we had uh, <coughs> previously and this is the outputs we are we were getting at every clock pulse and it keeps on repeating 0 1 2 3 then 0 1 2 3 0 1 2 3 like this so here you can see this clock external clock i have made like this 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 clock pulses i have taken so that you can see the repetition of the of the sequence this is the output q0 here and this is q1 here q0 is your ms lsb q1 is your msb okay how this curve will be made you can see this is similar to clock signals just the frequency is changed you can see so 
this guy will change its output if there will be a negative edge in your external clock negative edge i have marked with arrow you can see these are the negative edge of edge of clock now this guy will change its output whenever there will be a negative edge so initially it was 0 0 so both the guys were 0 0 you can see q0 started when there was a negative edge in clock it changes a state from 0 to 1 again next time it changes its state from 1 to 0 that second negative uh, second uh, uh, negative edge then third negative edge you can see it changes state fourth negative edge you can see changes state so 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 likewise 0 1 0 1 0 1 likewise it goes so every negative edge it will change its state that is the behavior of this lsb now what is happening about this guy look at carefully the clock presented to this t1 flip-flop is the output q0 so whatever the q0 you have done now its negative edge will decide its output okay so mark its negative edge you can see i have marked this is the negative edge of this pulse so you can imagine right uh, this is one clock then another third fourth fifth like this so negative edge i have marked and then what i did is i changed the state of q1 whenever there was a negative edge in q0 okay instead of looking at the uh, negative edge of clock i am looking at the negative edge of q0 because this is negatively edge triggered and the output uh, q0 is feeded as the clock to t1 that's why i am looking at this uh, uh, wave okay so whenever there was a negative edge you can see the state so initially q1 is 0 it stays 0 here as well and when there was a transition in q0 from ne negative edge you you change the state of q1 from 0 to 1 similarly it stays like this changes its state here stays like this changes its state stays like this changes its state so you can see this is the curve of your q1 the curve of your q0 here the frequency is high slightly less more or less okay you can see it is spreading okay in in in, uh, in uh, let's say in this four four clock cycle of clocks one two three four four cycles are there in clock you have only two cycles here you have only one cycle here okay so that is how you can imagine the the uh, the outputs so here you can see q1 q0 q1 is your msb lsb is q0 so you can see 0 0 then 0 1 1 0 1 1 see i have written 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 1 these are the output this is one this is also one right then it's again restarts 0 0 right 0 1 1 0 1 1 then again it restarts 0 0 likewise it goes on and on so you can see the repetition in pattern and you can see how this circuit is working you don't have to do this much of analysis i'll tell you a shortcut so that you will see in few seconds that it is a up counter or down counter it is just for your explanation how the circuit is working so you have seen two bit out counter it's it's timing diagram now you might be satisfied with how it works now i'll give you some of the characteristics and features of of uh, this up uh, with this counter so that you will you will know about them more okay like mod number what is the frequency how it is changing you can see the frequency is divided here the frequency uh, total four clock cycles in four clock cycles you are having two here so it's like frequency divided by two then here divide by four likewise okay you can you can count that in four cycles you have only two cycles and here only one so frequency is divided by uh, if uh, t clock is um, is uh, four times of t q0 so uh, it becomes frequency you will calculate then it will uh, come out to be divided by two divided by four that we will i'll give you the analysis uh, next okay so my motive was of this uh, this part was to show you the timing diagram and make you clear uh, convince you with the uh, the working of uh, this up counter to bit up counter and it keeps on running okay now whatever discussion we had regarding the frequency i have given you mathematical expression here 
you can see uh, 4 clock pulses 4 of this clock pulses is equal to 2 of clock pulses of q0 right you can see that 1 2 3 4 within this 4 you have only 2 clock cycle right 1 and 2 so that's what i've written here 4 clock cycles t clock is equal to 2 t q0 okay if you will cancel you will get 2 uh, t q0 is equal to 2 t clock uh, you will invert it then you will get f q0 is equal to f clock divided by 2 f q0 is equal to f clock divided by 2 so what it means it means whatever the clock frequency you are providing at the output of flip flop q0 flip flop at the output you will have the clock frequency divided by 2 whatever the wave you will have at the output of your first flip flop that wave will have the frequency divide uh, of clock divided by 2 okay clock frequency divided by 2 so this whatever you are external clock you are applying at the output of q0 uh, you will be having a wave whose frequency will be half of this similarly if you will compare this guy and this guy you will have a 4 t clock 4 t clock will have only one cycle of tq1 so that will give you fq1 is equal to f clock divided by 4 okay this simply means whatever clock frequency you will provide at the output of q1 flip flop you will have a wave whose frequency will be f clock divided by 4 this is very very important you should be able to visualize it that's what i am trying to show you first i showed you how the circuit will work then i gave you the timing diagram then i am giving you some some uh, extra stuff from this timing diagram you can see that the frequencies are changing okay so likewise if you will go the to the third flip flop if there will be one more flip flop that will divided by 2 again so it will be f clock divided by 8 so we will see that in 3 bit up counter okay so this is one parameter i wanted to give you about frequency there is something called uh, mod uh, frequency also i gave you uh, one thing i have not uh, told you is mod mod value right mod value is just something called uh, the, the total number of distinct state mod modulus modulus of counter this means uh, total number of distinct total number of distinct uh, states uh, in counter sequence 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 so for example we had a 0 1 2 3 then again 0 right or you can also write like this okay it goes on and on so you can see how many distinct distinct mean how, how many different states are there okay so this is your first state second state third state fourth is this is not your fifth state because it is similar to this that is what distinct means it should be different so total you have four distinct uh, states in the sequence that's why it is called mod four counter okay or what you can say is two to the power n counter where n is the number of bit so two to the power two is four that's why this you are getting is four okay so that's the mod value uh, mod value and we will see uh, your frequency will divide it by mod value that all uh, th those things also i will tell you but later on first my motive is to give you a clear picture of how a, a counter works and what are the timing diagrams and everything what the other things like mod value frequency you know, these are attributes of your counter first you should be knowing how it works then uh, you will be able to imagine these stuffs Okay, so modulus of counter and frequency is some extra stuff I have given. Uh, now let me uh, give you the working of 2 bit down counter so that much more clarity you will get. And same thing we will see how the timing diagram works, what is the mod value and um, what is the frequency, how it is changing, everything. And all of it will be, uh, I will give a, a shortcut as well so that in a in few seconds you will be able to 
uh, figure out uh, what the circuit is and how it is working okay just it's a initial time that's why i'm taking too much uh, time to explain you okay